Welcome to part two of the Quad SMU project, the implementation phase. This project is a four channel source measure unit based on the AD5522 PMU chip. For this part, I discuss and demonstrate the implementation of the evaluation board, a first prototype, and the final boards. In part one, I covered the design and design decisions, including block diagrams and schematics. You can find more project details and the design files at my website, www.djericson.com slash quad-smu. Like most complicated chips, the AD5522 comes with an evaluation board. And the evaluation board is quite nice. It has the IC, it has a bunch of connectors to bring out the outputs, and it has jumpers. It's controlled by a single chip micro over USB. Analog Devices provides a nice set of software to control the uh, evaluation board. So the evaluation board has three power supplies, plus or minus 15 and plus five. It has the main IC that contains the four source mesh units. It has a microprocessor and a USB interface to control it, evaluation software controls the unit through the USB interface. And you can see there's an evaluation CD that Analog Devices provides. And the evaluation software was quite nice. Let me see if I can get a screenshot of it. So here are the two panels that the evaluation board software has. The upper left is the main panel and it allows you to set force voltage, set the force source, whether it's force current or force voltage or high impedance, set the measure voltage, set the uh, current range, set the reference voltage, and also set clamp levels and comparator levels. The other settings are the things like the internal settings like the measurement gain, thermal shutdown, uh, whether the clamp is latched or unlatched, and also it allows you to write directly to the DAC registers. This panel also will let you set voltages and currents directly. And also notice that the register set in the chip will allow you to select which, uh, which channel you are talking to. And in fact, you can, you can write the same values to any registers or all registers at the same time or, or individual one register at a time. This panel provides uh, bit level access to all the registers within the device. There's a system control register, the SCR, then there's a PMU register, which is for each channel. And you can read and write the, uh, to the PMU register. So the system control register has things like enabling the clamps, the channel address, any alarms, and global gain and offset settings. The PMU register has things like current range for that channel, what the measure function is, the system force and sense, clamp enable, comparison enables, and there's some unused bits as well. So uh, this software is pretty good. It allows you to go in pretty quickly at the bit level, at the register level, and to control pretty much all the capabilities of the, of the board. This panel contains the uh, DAC registers. For each force DAC, FIN DAC, there's the setting, the default setting for the uh, DAC. There's the M, which is the gain which defaults to full scale FFFF and there's a C register which defaults to mid scale and that's the offset. The clamp high and clamp low registers and then there's the compare registers. Again there's one for each voltage and current range and there's gain and offset for each one. There's some additional features that the software, software provides. Oh, and down here on the bottom is the read ADC and the read ADC allows you to read the A to D, and all it does is give a, uh, a straight binary number. I, actually, I think it's a hex number for the A to D converter. So all in all, it's a pretty powerful chip, and I thought maybe, just maybe, I can uh, use the evaluation board. Since it provides pretty much all the capabilities of the chip, I could use the evaluation board with some Arduino code to make a four-channel SMU. So my original plan was to use the uh, evaluation board as a daughter board. The, and also the evaluation board is reasonably priced. The chip itself is about $80.
and the evaluation board is only $120 and that adds the reference and the A to D and and all the support circuitry for the SMU chip. So it seemed reasonable to use the evaluation board. So here's an early prototype using the evaluation board I have an adapter that I built that made it easier to access the uh, pins on the SPI connector and to connect them to an Arduino which is buried in the wires back there. There's an Arduino uh, module plugged in and you can see the OLED display. I used a uh, low res but uh, larger OLED display and there in the background is the uh, logic analyzer that I used to read the uh, to talk to the SPI. So originally I just plugged the logic analyzer directly onto the pins of the board. I wanted to uh, verify that my software was correct and I used the evaluation software uh, with the logic analyzer to read the SPI commands that were going back and forth between this, the CPU and the SMU chip. But as soon as I sort of figured out that there was no rocket science there, that it was just uh, it was just pretty much basic 32-bit transfers talking to the A to D and the SPI device. And I collected some data on it and, you know, used the evaluation software to, to give me known data. But by the way, the evaluation software shows you all the register contents that it's writing and reading, so it makes it pretty easy to write the, write the code. However, my usual complaint about evaluation software is that the, they don't provide any software for communicating, no API or, or mechanism for com communicating to the, uh, to the board, and they don't provide any of the source code for the uh, microprocessor within the board. So, you're, you know, you're kind of on your own. They give you very good documentation on the registers and the hardware access, but uh, they do not provide source code for talking to the device. And I searched uh, searched the entire internet looking for source code and I eventually found, a, found somebody who was using this chip and they were using it with a Raspberry Pi and programming in Python. So that was uh, helpful and it was useful but um, since I'm programming in Arduino and I'm not using a Raspberry Pi I was pretty much on my own. So anyway you can see that the Arduino is communicating to the OLED display and I have the A to D for this channel uh, calibrated and I can put a load on there if I want and it's currently reading zero and I also built a little encoder and I tried to be clever and I <laughs> I used a two wire encoder connector so the encoder allows you to set the voltage and it only does one volt steps right now. This is very rudimentary software. And you can see it goes from minus 11 to plus 11 volts. And there's the output. There's plus 11, 10. You can see my meter set for six and a half digits and it does a pretty good job of uh, using its 16-bit DAX. There's minus 3, minus 5, plus 5, plus 10, plus 6. So yeah, I've been pretty pretty happy with the chip. I did have to calibrate all the outputs and all the ranges. So I've only, at this point, I haven't calibrated the currents yet. Another thing about this board is that it has limited uh, limited access. So it has test points for the outputs of each channel, but it doesn't bring it out into a wire. And it also has places where you can plug in uh, resistors if you want for loads, uh, capacitor and resistors for, for loads. But yeah, it was, I was uh, pretty happy with this, and I made a lot of progress with the Arduino board. So I ultimately gave up on the idea of using the evaluation board. Mechanically, it was going to be pretty ugly. I was going to have to add about 20 or 30 wires onto the back of the board. There wasn't a good way to mount the board. The evaluation board that I have is a is a pad down version, which uses the PC board as a heat sink. And I prefer the pad up version that this is because you can add a significantly larger heat sink to the chip and you can therefore get a lot more power out of it. 
the pad down version is you're probably limited to a watt or two whereas you can probably get a couple of watts out of it um, and the pad up version with a with a adequate heat sink uh, and you can see here the two of the three boards the power supply is not is not shown right now this is the main board and you can see there's a connector for the OLED display there's another connector for the front panel board here's the uh, processor yeah, there's connectors back here for the fan and there's there's fan control uh, circuitry but I haven't added that onto this board yet there's an isolator that isolates the SPI bus from the CPU to the uh, to the main chip and it also isolates the uh, A to D converter here's the barely see it here's the uh, 5 volt reference is a precision 5 volt reference nice one uh, three parts per million and here's the A to D converter and that's a tiny little package this uh, device is the uh, 15 volt or 20 volt to 5 volt power converter uh, turns out the, the the whole system uses a isolated plus or minus 15 volt supply but it still needs a little bit of 5 volts to drive the uh, to drive the uh, microprocessor, the display, and the front panel, and the uh, as well as the fan. I plan to use a 5 volt fan on this. And I'll give you a quick demo of it working. So this uh, here's the here's the front panel controls. Uh, these buttons here, the left, right, up, down, and then there's an enter button which I don't currently use. And these are to select the four channels. So right now it's channel zero channel 1, channel 2, channel 3. So let's go back to channel 0 because I have that hooked to the multimeter. Uh, this is re currently reading uh, voltage and current sense but I don't have it calibrated right now for, for measure. The voltage measure and current measure are not calibrated. However the voltage output is calibrated. Oh, Let's uh, go through the user interface real quick. So notice that the cursor is currently under the uh, under the LSB which is not a great default but I'm gonna fix that and I can move the cursor left to right to select any of the digits so let's go to the tenth tens digit oops one, one more digit so let's go to the units digit here and now I can use the encoder to reduce to nine eight seven six five four three two one zero, so that's the that's the encoder being used to provide the uh, the digit, and then if I want, I can select a different digit and and have different control over the. Uh, so, for example, let's go to two minus two. Let's go to minus one volt, and then position it over here. You can see I can control control the digits one at a time. So then, uh, if I press the encoder button, which is there's a button on this encoder, it switches from uh, setting the uh, force value, which is currently in volts, to the uh, current range. And I can use the encoder to select the four different current ranges five different current ranges, sorry. And then uh, if I push it again it goes to what the force function is and I can change it from force current to force voltage. There's no load right now so it's not reading any current. So so yeah that's a, it's a nice simple uh, user interface and I'll expand that to add the other the other functions. As a simple menu structure I simply use the uh, the select button on the encoder to switch between the uh, different uh, the different things that you that you want to enter, and it, it does it shows you on the display by moving the cursor. So let's go. We're set for force voltage, and what range are we on now? We're on the 50 milliamp range. Let's go back to the 2 milliamp range. And then let's check out the display. You move that big wire out of the way. 
So that's minus one volt. Let's see, I'm set for a tenth of a volt now. 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7654, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 1 volt. 5 volts, 4.8, 4.9, so you can see it's fairly, ac fairly accurate. The error is uh, well under a percent. It's more like a 0 0.1, 0.2 percent uh, if you un don't calibrate the chip. And calibration is a fairly big deal on this, on this device. It has four channels and each one has to be calibrated for voltage force. Uh, the voltage measure has to be calibrated, but then on current there's five ranges, so that's uh, five ranges times uh, times four channels is 20 uh, individual calibrations for the force, and then the measure has to be calibrated as well, so there's 20 more calibrations. So um, it's crying to be automated. It's crying to have automated uh, calibration. There is one nice feature that this chip has, this over here, this unloaded connector. They call it the system force and system sense, system measure uh, connector. And you can tie the voltmeter to that and then, and then there's a MUX built into the chip that connects each channel one at a time to that connector. And so you don't have to, uh, you don't have to keep switching your outputs to calibrate each channel. And you can do the full check calibration through that, and that's how it's intended to be used. That requires software that doesn't exist right now. And here's the power supply board. Uh, takes in ground, uh, neutral, and line. It has some jumpers here to select 120 or 240 volts, and it's a split core transformer. And you can see there's the you can see the split between the primary and secondary. And the nice thing about split core transformers is they give you very low common mode. Uh, noise. There's only a few microamps of AC noise and that's coupled into the output grounds on the instrument so you want to minimize that. Diodes. Diodes here. Uh, filter capacitors. Output capacitors. And uh, and just normal 7815 and 7915 regulators. And an output connector with plus 15 ground, minus 15, and plus 20. This has been part two of the Quad SMU project. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in building one, the design files, firmware, and more details on the project can be found at www.djerickson.com slash quad SMU. That's quad dash SMU. If there's interest, I'll do another video after completion. What's left to complete the project? A big one is to complete the control firmware and add all the uh, additional features of the chip that includes sourcing current and measure current on all the five ranges. I need to add the skippy commands so that the instrument can be controlled from an external USB. I need to write an automatic calibration program in Python. Once I have skippy command created I can use that to uh, plus a external voltmeter to do full calibration on, on the instrument. And there's a lot of calibration. On each of the four channels there's voltage force and voltage measure calibration, and then current source, force, and current measure on five ranges. In addition, the clamps need to be calibrated as well. So there's, you know, dozens and dozens of calibration settings that all have to be uh, managed. So it's definitely asking for an automatic calibration program. Doing that manually would be uh, quite time consuming. And last but not least is to build an enclosure for it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and also subscribe if you'd like to see more of my projects. Thanks.